it up. So, Donnie, we're going to start with Chase Claypool, labeled a diva by Steelers.com, by of his all people. Own team site. Of all people. Yeah. Of all people, labeled a diva. What are your thoughts on Chase Claypool and his diva status? So, I think when you think about some of the top receivers to ever play in this league, Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, Antonio Brown, Chad Johnson, just re- recent names. They're all definitely labeled as divas. I think it's almost a requirement outside of guys like Julio and um, Chris Carter and Jerry Rice to kind of have that, that mentality of you. Like, mm-hmm. I, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I can and I will do X, Y, and Z. This is who I am. They almost need to have that flagrant personality to them. Yep. I don't think right now Chase Claypool is a diva. But if you go back and you watch the games, you will see a little bit of diva tendencies. I'm talking looking for flags whenever, you know, you probably shouldn't be looking for them as a rookie. Nope. Um, you know, just constantly complaining about calls or no calls, not being able to use your six foot five body to go up and use jump ball, you know? Yep. Just the, the, those kind of small little things. And then you, you look at what happened after the Brown Steelers wildcard game where he hopped on the stream and said, the Browns are going to get clapped. Um, you know, he, he's very big into the whole social media, TikTok, you know, and Instagram thing, whatever. I, I don't really have a problem with that. I don't think he is a problem right now but i can definitely see where bob labriola was coming from you know the 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 seeds are definitely there and to be honest there were there were a couple times last year where i watched chase claypool and i'm like okay yeah he he likes to run his mouth a little bit you know i i always kind of see him you know smirk and you know do this this or that after you know lightly being touched where it's the NFL, you know, a lot of the times not going to cause some contact, but I, I, I'll leave it up for debate, but no, I, I definitely see where Labriola was coming from. Where he Yeah, definitely. I, I think that in the grand scheme of things, Chase Claypool came into the NFL with an attitude, you know what I mean? Like he, and, and that's good. You know, like you said, wide receivers have attitudes. That's just it's what they have. Like Antonio yeah. Brown, uh, maybe a bad example. And I think a lot of people are, kind of pushing that notion they're like oh well the Steelers kept a B and his you know controversy under wraps for this long it's like no a B went from a little bit of a diva you know the normal amount of diva to Antonio Brown pretty drastically like that wasn't a quick or that wasn't a long turnaround like he just started to lose it and then it just became a huge problem so I don't think that they kept it under wraps and then you, you look at other guys. I mean, Heinz Ward, I saw today that someone brought it up. Heinz Ward set, you know, sat out a summer because he didn't think that the team, the team was devoted to him, that, that Ben was devoted to him, and nobody, nobody says anything about it. So yep. he's a wide receiver, dude. Wide receivers have attitude. That's what they do. When it comes to the social media part of it, that's dumb. You know, anybody yep. who's like, oh, he's making TikToks, he's, he's got an attitude, he's jumping on live streams and calling out the Browns, like – Okay, it's 2021. If you have the opportunity to make more money using your platform, we're all trying to do it. Why can't he? You know what I'm saying? Just because he has a big name and and has a little bit of swagger doesn't mean that he's a problem. It just means that he's using his platform the correct way, the way we all would. I mean, we're on here talk, basically talking smack on guys half the time, trying to build a brand. You know, he's trying to do the same thing. Calls yeah. out the Browns, I get it. But, you know, he called out the Browns saying they're going to get clapped. Everybody in Pittsburgh thought the Browns were going to get clapped, me and you included, okay? Juju comes out saying the Browns is the Browns, and everybody makes a big deal out of it. So it, it's just a headline. I will say this. Chase Claypool does have a little bit of – I'll stick with the word attitude when it comes to talking to the media. I don't think that he believes that players can be the problem, that it's all the media – and if he doesn't change that, he's going to end up like an Ocho Cinco or Terrell Owens where, you know, he just has this, this personality that nobody really attracts to. Um, I, I don't know if it'll get changed with Juju gone or if it won't, but that's my thoughts on, on the situation. Yeah, I really don't know. And I, I do want to point out the differences between um, 
the, the modern era of players and guys like Heinz Ward and even going back to the the guys of the 70s, you know, Swan and Stallworth, because let's not forget, you know, those were a bunch of characters in themselves. Mm-hmm. This was that A, nobody's around to tweet stuff out that they did 24-7. Yep. And B, they won Super Bowls. Heinz Ward won two Super Bowls during his time. I don't care what Heinz Ward says. He's a two-time Super Bowl winner. Okay. <laughs> If, if the Steelers had won the Super Bowl this year, nobody would be talking about Chase Claypool right now. No, no, not at all. And that's the thing. They don't – and that's how it is with everything. I mean, you look at every single headline the Steelers have had since week 12, and it has been problem after problem after problem because they're not winning. When they were 11-0, and Chase Claypool was – Possibly the offensive rookie of the year, Ben's comeback player of the year. Juju is this third down maniac that everybody loves, a hard worker. And then they start losing. Juju's a problem. He's dancing all over the field. Chase Claypool's a diva. And Ben's washed. That's just, you know, it, it, if they were winning, it'd be a different story. You hit that right on the head. And, and that's where they're at. You know, the Steelers need to win because if they don't win, the media tends to just grab them any way that they can and it's the truth it's always been the truth 